Dry socket is the most common post-operative complication after tooth extraction, which presents approximately two to four days post-operatively. The incidence is approximately 5% following exodontia. It is referred to as alveolar osteitis, septic socket, fibrinolytic alveolitis, to name but a few. There are a variety of theories of causes of this, and it is unlikely to occur in the first 24 hours due to the presence of antiplasmin, which delays fibrinolysis, and therefore it is only once the levels of antiplasmin reduce that breakdown of the clot occurs. Local release of plasminogen activators facilitate the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin, which breaks down fibrin, and you will recall the importance of fibrin in the healing process. Breakdown of fibrin then leads to lysis of the blood clot. In addition, plasmin is actively involved in kinin production. Kinins release inflammatory mediators, therefore causing inflammation. However, they are also involved in sensitization and stimulation of pain receptors. The combination of this pathological process accounts for the breakdown of the clot and the presentation of intense, usually well-localized pain. Risk factors for alveolar osteitis are smokers, lower extractions, females taking the oral contraceptive pill, poor oral hygiene, inexperienced operators and difficult extractions. Diagnosis is usually at two to four days after surgery and patients present with pain which is not relieved by over-the-counter analgesia. There is often halitosis and clinically there is evidence that the blood clot is lost and there may be also debris in the socket. In addition to this, the gingivae surrounding the socket may be erythematous. It is important to be able to formulate a differential diagnosis and exclude other causes of similar symptoms such as medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaws, osteoradionecrosis, cemental osseous dysplasia and malignancy. Remember that a non-healing socket without a cause is a red flag and should be managed appropriately. It is important to distinguish between dry socket and infection and remember the signs and symptoms of infection and the differences between this and dry socket. Dry socket is not an infection and therefore is not treated with antimicrobials. Diagnosis is clinically. If, however, you have not seen the patient before and there is a doubt of the diagnosis, then a radiograph should be taken to exclude either a retained root or instrument in the socket or any other pathology. Treatment involves irrigation of the socket with saline, and in the past we have used chlorhexidine to irrigate the socket. However, there have been several reported cases of anaphylactic reactions from the use of this, and therefore we should err on the side of caution. Saline is safe and effective. If the socket is extremely painful, it is possible to infiltrate a small amount of local anaesthetic around the socket. However, be conscious that the local anaesthetic will contain a vasoconstrictor which may further exacerbate the pathological process. Placement of a dressing called alvigel is recommended into the socket. There are reported cases in the literature of foreign body reactions to this dressing, and the manufacturer instructions are unclear as to how long the paste should remain in the socket, but they do claim it to be self-eliminating. The gold standard treatment is to use alvagel, which has changed in composition since 2012. Previously it contained butamben, which was a local anaesthetic and iodoform, as well as eugenol. The contents of alvagel now include eugenol, which is also known as clove oil, an aromatic oil extracted from cloves used widely for flavouring, but has also been used as a herbal treatment for toothache due to its antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties. There is also some scientific evidence showing that this has antibacterial properties and inhibits the growth of some fungi. Pengawa jambi is the accepted name for fibres which are abundantly present on the base of the stalks of large fern trees indigenous to the island of Sumatra. Thought to ironically arrest bleeding but in this case is used as a transport medium. Sodium laurel sulfate, which is used as a surfactant, this lowers the surface tension between ingredients and is used as a cleansing agent. It is also found in toothpaste. Additional components include calcium carbonate, mint flavour and excipients. As you can see, the dressing comes in a small pot. When you remove the dressing from the pot, ensure that you use a clean instrument which is not contaminated from the clinical field. Use a small amount with college tweezers and place it in the socket. Only a small amount needs to be placed in the socket. It does not need to be packed fully to the gingival margin. Patients should be advised not to rinse for the next six hours to ensure that the dressing has effect, otherwise it will be washed out. If a dry socket is not treated, it is self-limiting, but the dressing will ease the pain and reduce the inflammation. You should warn patients that occasionally this process needs to be repeated over the next few days, although this is rare. If the patient represents on more than one occasion with these symptoms, make sure that you question your diagnosis and treatment. 
Non-healing sockets are a concern and should be treated as suspicious until proven otherwise.